Welcome back. In my ongoing study of the coronavirus, I've improved my computer model. It now simulates different defensive measures like sequestration, and I have some new results. Let's start by answering some questions. This virus is formerly called the novel coronavirus because it's the newest member of a family of seven coronaviruses that include the four common cold viruses as well as the earlier SARS and MERS outbreak viruses. As we study this virus, we're seeing what may be a decline in the predicted CFR, case fatality rate, to below 1%. This results from more accurate reporting and from realizing that many people have the virus and don't know it. We cannot stop it. In the long term, until a vaccine is developed, everyone is at risk of infection. This virus moved very rapidly from one location in December 2019 to every country in the world over a period of just a few months. Because the virus has animal reservoirs, even if we all sequester ourselves for months, the virus will resume infecting us when we return to our normal lives. Therefore, our plan is to slow the rate at which people are infected so the healthcare system isn't overwhelmed and unable to offer care. The present stay-at-home policy is a necessary first step in that defense. Effective strategies include social distancing, personal hygiene, avoiding unnecessary travel, and more widely available testing followed by isolation of those who are infectious. In this strategy, the same number of people get infected, but over a longer period of time, so there aren't more patients than hospital beds. Here's a graph from my analysis program that compares infection rates, starting entirely uncontrolled and moving to greater discipline. Without any controls, the healthcare system would be entirely overwhelmed, leading to unnecessary deaths. If we don't slow the infection rate, if the healthcare system finds itself with more patients than beds, doctors will be forced to practice battlefield triage. People who will get better regardless of care, people who will get worse regardless of care, and people whose lives depend on immediate attention. Computer models may be used to inform public policy. I've developed a model based on a widely used infectious disease equation, but with some additional features. My model shows what happens when people sequester themselves, when they stay home for weeks or months. Here's my analysis program's display. It shows the three analyzed groups, the susceptible in blue, the infected in red, and the recovered in green. The purpose of my program is to analyze how these groups change over time when confronted by the virus. In this example graph, the blue susceptible group becomes infected, red, and then joins the recovered group, green. Given enough time, just as in reality, everyone gets infected and joins the recovered group. This simulation's purpose is to test ways to reduce the unacceptably high number of infected people, 67% on day 31, to keep from overwhelming the healthcare system. Let's see whether a nearly perfect sequestration can do the job. Here we go. In this animation, the gray box is the sequestration time in which 90% of the population must stay at home. The time interval extends to 60 days. But the outcome is not what one might expect. After the sequestration ends, the infection rate soars and the peak rate is nearly as high as without the sequestration. I've carefully examined the mathematics and the result is valid. What it means is that sequestration alone is not enough. Also, 60 days is too short a time interval. Dr. Anthony Fauci, advisor to the president, recently addressed this issue. Do you think that there would be any conditions where you think politicians may act too soon and start saying, let's start opening up some of these restrictions? What would happen in, in a red alert type scenario like that? Well, I think that would be unfortunate. And that's the thing that we that we advise against. If you do open up too soon, you could have the perverse effect that in as it's going this way, then it starts going back up. Sure. And then you essentially compound the need for the kind of things, respirators, ventilators, hospital beds, ICU, things like that. 
One might ask, if China and South Korea can deal with this virus so efficiently, why can't we? It's a fair question. In this next simulation, I show how an increase in public discipline and appropriate governmental action can produce a much better outcome. In this simulation, after the sequestration shown at the left, we drive down the primary infection term, a quantity called R0, the rate at which an infected person infects others. This is accomplished with increased testing, isolation of the infected, greater awareness of the ways this virus spreads, and fewer people who think the rules don't apply to them. It will require a sense of shared purpose this country hasn't experienced since World War II. Developing a vaccine has the highest priority and scientists are working to produce one, but this process cannot be rushed. Candidate vaccines must be thoroughly tested for safety and efficacy before one is selected for widespread use. No, that is not possible. The smallpox virus had no animal host, so a concentrated effort resulted in its complete extinction. By contrast, the coronavirus has at least one animal host, bats, and probably more, which means we cannot eliminate it. We will have to apply a vaccine to ourselves and to future generations. But we got plenty of warning from many people over decades. Here's Bill Gates giving a clear warning in his 2015 TED Talk. Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. We need to understand that the coronavirus is not a cause, it's an effect. In the same way, global warming and climate change are not causes, but effects. Frequent wars, the refugee crisis, autocratic regimes, all are effects. The cause is world overpopulation, and the cure is education. <laughs>